Hey guys, how are you? I hope everybody's good. Will's Will's doing something. You can't stop me, Minerva. Knock it off, get Danvers. You're a disgrace to the Star Force. Star Force is a disgrace to the universe. What what, what you got there, Will? Oh, buddy? What you hey, got there, little buddy? Everybody? Everybody, how's it going on this week's Wolf Den podcast? We're gonna what you talk got about there? The best years in video gaming. What was that? What I, was that that you got there? Oh, you know, just a couple of Marvel Legends figures. No big deal. This um, this is a Captain Marvel I got recently because I needed free shipping on something, uh, mm -hmm. and it was cheap. And this is a Captain Marvel figure I got many years ago, um, but it has a removable head, so you can choose between... Uh, Brie Larson or uh, Gemma Chan's character from the movie. So now I have two Captain Marvel figures. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. Is it a big uh, those Marvel Legends big deal thing? Uh, Marvel Legends is the like I don't want to say the premier collectible line of action figures for Marvel, but they're like Hasbro's top of the line. Oh, uh, I'm so yeah. sorry. They're like they're like the Star Wars Black series for Marvel. Ooh, I did not know yeah. of such a thing. Guys. Get get with it. Uh check this out. Look at my beautiful latte art. It's a little heart. Look at it. I made a heart. Oh. It's so cute. That's so cute. That's why that's why I was like a few seconds late. Leave me alone. <laughs> Anyway, we got a lot going on today, all right? A lot's have been happening, and a lot is happening right now. But so little's happening yeah. that we are just, we decided we're gonna do a we're gonna talk about the best year in video games because uh, oh, a lot is happening, but it's a lot of little things. It's a lot of little things. It's a lot of things that we can't make into a main topic of the show, so we have to pull from yeah. our little little catalog. Also, this is an accidental lungo shot. I uh, I made a really bad espresso. I don't know what a lungo is. It means but... it was too long. I, I pulled the uh, shot for too long. So I put a little pumpkin spice in it. Hopefully that uh, makes it a little better. And as we've seen from Dune, pumpkin spice fixes everything. Ah, yes. I have not seen Dune, uh, but I believe you. Well, uh, spoiler <laughs> alert, the spice they're all fighting for is pumpkin spice. That, that's the reveal at the end? That's the reveal. Wow. Hey, uh, uh, friggin' Willow Davis, thanks for the 13 months. Uh, Wolf Den Podcast featuring Chris Pratt and Chris Pratt. Yeah, here we are. Yep. Uh, I love lasagna uh, and spaghetti and ravioli. Yeah, and I hate Mondays. Just, I, just I, saw, on. I saw a great tweet. I want to I wanna read it. I want to read it word for word because it was, okay. it was uh, about the Chris Pratt thing. In, uh, in case you don't know, Chris Pratt is also now going to be the voice of Garfield in the upcoming Garfield movie. I guess that should be the main Bill topic. Murray, Bill Murray is too good for it anymore. Bill Murray's too expensive. Uh, yeah. You, so, did you know he Bill Murray only did Garfield because he thought it was going to be done by the Coen brothers, but it wasn't. It was being written by somebody who happens to have the same name as one of the Coen oh, brothers. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> they tricked him. They basically did. That sucks. All right, this tweet says, Chris Pratt's Garfield doesn't hate Mondays. He just doesn't want to see... He just doesn't think they should get married. <laughs> I butchered it, but that's a joke. You get the uh, joke. I, I got it. I got it. Uh, underscore, thanks for the 46 months. Troy McClure, thank you for the 100 bits. Hey, we, ha we have in Europe this weird that we turn... Will you read this? I'm not... He's speaking hey, to Troy McClure. <laughs> we, I remember you from such movies as Today We Kill and Tomorrow We Die and Dial M for Murderousness. Uh, hey, we have in Europe this weird thing uh, that we turn time one hour back for in the summer and winter so I don't have to stay up until 2 a.m. to watch your stream. Oh, it, I guess it, you have uh, daylight savings time over there in Bizarro World I'm as not well. I'm I not crazy. The way he worded that broke my brain. Yeah, it's uh, there is a language barrier. That's fine. I just I uh, I, I it made me it it, it hurt. <laughs> it, it it physically. Anyway, uh, 
Yes. Uh, we yeah. should. I do want to stream earlier in the day one of these days uh, just to give our European uh, viewers yeah. uh, some, some FaceTime. But uh, then I got to wake up. <laughs> and I don't like doing that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, boys and girls, we got a lot to talk about today. But also, yes. we have we have a few things to get off right off the rip. We have to talk yeah. about this. The, we, we, at the end of every month, we like to talk about some free games you can get. But first, even before well, that, we've been doing a cool new thing. Yes. Uh, let me pull it up because I forgot to have it on my phone. Do you have? So, is there a at, link in the keep or no? There's a link in the keep. Yeah. Okay. I can just hopefully just click on that. Uh, so for those of you who list, like to listen to us over on Spotify, uh, we've been putting up a little poll uh, with every episode that we've been doing for the past few episodes. Last week, because we talked about uh, the bad emulation that is occurring on the Nintendo 64 games for Switch Online, we put up a poll and asked, which N64 Switch Online issue should Nintendo fix first? Uh, the top result with 36% was controller mapping, uh, followed by 29% with add more worthwhile games, and then at 20% lag or f or frame rate drops. They want uh, Nintendo to fix the lag and the frame rate drops. Uh, and then you got graphical glitches at 9%, and at 5% that weird memory pack issue in Mario Kart 64. Uh, <laughs> so I feel like. I caused a bias here because my main concern was the was the controller mapping, well, and I made a huge deal out of the controller mapping. And I, f I I feel like not everybody has the same feeling about the controller mapping that I do. I don't agree with that. I think a lot of people are finding the controller mapping to be very bad for the N sixty four games. That was like the uh, next to like the graphical glitches and like the general lagginess. That was like the number one thing people were complaining about mm -hmm. on Twitter was the fact that the but the button mapping between an N sixty four controller and a Switch controller is just it's too different for it to work. It, it, in so I, I I just I just like it's the easiest thing to look at and be like oh that's horrible. But then when you play it, yeah. I feel like most people are just gonna be fine with it. But but if you're a listener of this show, you're probably not like most people. You probably yeah. enjoy uh, these obscure games that not that the general public doesn't like to play. Yeah, uh, but I think it will come to a point where there's going to be one game where it's just so incompatible with the Switch controller that something's something's going to have to happen. Either so Nintendo finally buckles and introduces button remapping, or people stop buying the expansion pack. So recently, I just got it and finally opened it and took it out and played with it. Uh, I think Sunday. Yeah. Uh, and let me tell you, I I booted up uh, Smash Brothers, Smash Ultimate with the N sixty four controller, and uh, it's actually really good. Like it feels really because really, the C stick, the C buttons act as the right stick. Oh wow! So you have physical buttons for smash attacks and stuff. It's freaking yeah. cool. Uh, the only problem that I had was the shoulder buttons were kind of flipped for the way that I would use them. Uh, okay. otherwise it was pretty friggin' cool. Um, I don't know how, I, I, I think that, I don't know how useful that is going to, to other people going forward, but when they release Smash Brothers on Nintendo Switch Online, that's going to be a huge deal. That's going to, that's oh, yeah. going to, that's going to bring a lot of people to, to, to Nintendo Switch Online. Yeah. Uh, Troy McClure gave us 100 bits and said, sorry for my French. I'm sorry for being an ignorant American. I assume <laughs> everybody speaks English, and I assume that like when you type like that, that, that you're purposely trying to get me to read it badly <laughs> because, yeah. because I can't read. And if that's you, okay. And, I, and I know you've seen this show before, and you know that I can't read. I just appreciate uh you from such educational films as designated drivers the life-saving nerds and earwigs ew <laughs> uh also t-dog gaming with six months says hey six months let's go oh i just want to hear the italian lady say that one <laughs> hey six months lego oh, that's pretty good 
That was pretty good. Uh, uh, I forgot to put in uh, the Lego Luigi's Mansion pack. In the that was a curveball. Uh, sorry, everybody. That was a curveball and a half. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so we did that. Now we got to talk about the games you're going to get this Plus month. And Xbox Live games with gold. Uh, it's the first Tuesday of the month, so these PlayStation Plus games are available to you for free, so as long as you're subscribed to PlayStation Plus. Um, for the PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation 4, you get Knockout City. Um, game slaps. Oh, yeah. So so its game is sick if you got people to play it with. If you don't got people to play yeah. it with, maybe, maybe don't. But this game is good. I don't, I mean, mm. so how does PlayStation Plus work? If, if, so I have this game as long as I have PlayStation Plus. Correct. So if I download this right now on my PlayStation, I will have this game as long as I have my PlayStation Plus subscription. That's great because yeah. Knockout City is free up to level 20 as far as I know. So okay. uh, it's also on Game Pass. So okay. if you have Xbox you, and you have Game Pass, you could just play on a Game Pass, uh, which is what I'm doing. Uh, but uh, if you have a PlayStation, now's your chance to get it without paying for the full game. You could just you can get past level 20 uh, yeah. on your PlayStation Plus subscription. I'm sorry. Now we can continue to the other dribble. Okay. Uh, next is First Class Trouble for the PS5 and PS4. A social deduction party game where six people play together online aboard a luxury space cruiser. Fancy. Um, Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning for the PS4. Um, the persistence. We got a lot of games for PS Plus this year, this month. The persistence for PSVR, and Walking Dead Saints and Sinners for the PSVR. So PSVR shown some little, sh getting shown some love. Also, until you fall for PSVR. That's three PlayStation VR games for the month of November as part wow. of PlayStation Plus. That's unheard of. Yeah, that is a lot of places. I mean, yeah. good because uh, I feel like they've been slacking. With, what is that? Okay, yeah. I feel like they've been slacking with PlayStation VR stuff. Um, and I also I also note that the PSVR games um, will be available until January third, whereas the other games, Knockout City, First Class Trouble, and Kingdoms of Amalur, will be available until December sixth. So you have a little bit more time to pick up the PSVR games. So. There was a lot of stuff. A lot of it's PlayStation VR. I, I feel like Kingdoms yeah. of All, All um, uh, Amalur. I feel like that's probably yeah. something people like. That yeah. Uh, <coughs> if, it's, if it's the game I'm thinking of, I think this is the one. It was made by baseball player Kurt Schilling in his studio, um, and it like almost bankrupted the state of Rhode Island. What the fuck? But it was yeah. It's a really <laughs> wild story. Yeah. It's that game. It's, uh, yeah, it was baseball player Kurt Schilling created his own video game studio because he legitimately likes video games, made this game, almost bankrupted the state of Rhode Island, bankrupted himself in the process of making it, uh, but apparently got very good reviews when it came out. <laughs> no, it got a 72 on Metacritic, and it got that's a that's six, decent. It, and this is the re-reckoning. Yeah. Uh, and it got a six out of ten from IGN, but King Kingdoms of Amalur probably got worse than that. Uh, well, Re Reckoning is just a like an HD remake of it. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to get the yeah. original to see if it if it was worse. Uh, I'm only seeing Re Reckoning. No, no. Uh, according to Wikipedia, the Metacritic was eighty across the board. 81. Oh, so Re Reckoning yeah. was worse than the original. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right so that's pretty good 80s are at yeah i like games that were rated worse than that so it's got to be pretty good mm -hmm. uh but anyway i think the star of the show right here is knockout city i think that game's great yeah even though it's already that's free up to level 20 well also because that's like a much more recent game and it's True. on ps5 as well True. so that that's a bit that's definitely a big get how about Xbox Games with Gold? Where Xbox has forgotten about this program that they have. <laughs> yeah, it's not great. 
Um, it's not bad, but it's not great. What? Uh, so, on the Xbox One, uh, and of course, Xbox Series X and S, uh, for the entire month of November, you get Moving Out. Mm-hmm. And from November 16th to December 15th, you get Kingdom Two Crowns. Never heard of either of those games. I've heard of Moving Out. Uh, it is it is uh, an overcooked uh, like like knockoff. Okay. Uh, over on the Xbox 360, which you can play on Xbox One and Series X via backwards compatibility. Uh, from now until November 15th, you get Rocket Knight. And from November 16th to the 30th, you get Lego Batman 2 DC Superheroes. Wait, what is Deadlands? It, it looks like the same artists. Uh, it looks like the same artist as uh, 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 the, the, the Iraqi Wait. game. Why does that. Why does the article say Kingdom Two Crowns, but the artwork say Deadlands? <laughs> Did they mess up? <laughs> Oh God! All right, I, I gotta look that up. Maybe it's known as something else in another territory. Oh, well, it it does it does the art on it says Deadlands, and then in very very tiny letters it says Two Kingdom Crowns. Oh, same artist from Bloodstain. Yes, that's what I would, yes I couldn't yeah. I I couldn't think of the name Bloodstain. Is this the game? Because this doesn't look. This doesn't look the same. <laughs> this does not look like the art. This looks like we're getting like an NES bait and switch right now. Yeah. It looks pretty cool though. Rocket yeah, Knight. I, 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 I did not know they did this. For the Xbox 360, I, I've never seen this before yeah, in my it's life. Like an AT, I, I don't know if it's like a reboot or a, like a remake of the original uh, Rocket Knight. But yeah, this is it. Uh, apparently it's very good. Uh, people genuinely like this. It looks uh, I'm awesome. to download that. Yeah. Give it a shot. That's crazy. I mean, I was never really yeah. that big into the original Rocket Knight, but uh No, but it's just cool to see because like there were two games on the Genesis and then nothing. <laughs> I don't mind when they remake games like this, like 2D games yeah. and remake them in, in 3D with nice graphics, but it still feels and plays the same. I'm down with yeah. that. And a lot of people aren't down with that, but I'm down with that. Um otherwise, uh lackluster from from, yeah. from uh, Microsoft. I also want to note, so we're also getting Lego Batman 2 mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the month. Uh, here's an interesting stat. Uh, there have been 28 licensed Lego video games for Xbox platforms in total. Holy hell. Like, dating back to 2005. Eight of them have been offered up as a games with gold game. In including Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga, Pirates of the Caribbean, Lego Indiana Jones 2, Lego Star Wars 3, Lego Star Wars 2 The Original Trilogy, Lego Indiana Jones 1, and Lego Batman earlier this year. And now we got Lego Batman 2. Yes. So they really are just like, you know, slowly but surely picking all the Lego games to make sure you have them. Even though Le uh, Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga contains the original trilogy. They must. And they gave away Lego Star Wars The Original Trilogy. They must have a good deal with Lego. They must have a good they deal with getting those all out. Yeah. Uh, I'd also like to note that Game Pass, we got new games for November. We have Grand Theft Auto San Andreas for consoles. Uh, it Takes Two, which I really want to play because oh. yeah, I really like the way really out. Good. Uh, it's yeah. now on Game Pass, and it's it's cloud console and PC. Also, Ooh. Forza Horizon Five, a game, and everything else is like kind of not that great. Uh, uh, kill it with uh, fire! Uh, kill what? it with fire! Come on. <laughs> also, I'm lo I'm I'm uh, the, probably the most important thing here is the last one, Minecraft for PC. <laughs> you can get it on Game Pass. That's pretty crazy. Well, better late than never. I think I have the uh, Java I, version, so this means that I can get the the regular old version on Game Pass. Yeah. I think that's pretty great. I should also I should also note that Grand Theft Auto San Andreas specifically is the remastered version that's coming in the uh, trilogy collection later mm. this month. One step from Eden, I've heard of. What is that? Yes. 
One I don't step remember from... what that game is though. Combines deck building. All right, we're out. Okay, we're out. All right, moving on. The best year for video games. Anchor. I got a notification from Anchor. Tony favorited your podcast. Thanks, Tony, dude. Oh, thanks for favoriting our podcast live on the podcast. You all should do the same. (laughs) Do it, and I'll get a million notifications on my phone right now. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know I had those. That's how little you guys like the podcast on Anchor. (laughs) Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah, half an hour into the podcast. Let's talk about uh, the best year for video games, Will, and why is it 1996? Uh, if by 1996 you mean maybe 2004, <laughs> then yes, uh, 2004 was a great year for video games. 1996 is the year I always say for video games. Wait, when did Pokemon come out? Was that 98? Am I, am I dumb? Uh, yeah, it was 98. Is is 1998 the year I'm thinking of? 1998 also phenomenal year for video games. So when people say... I'm uh, switching my answer to 1998. (laughs) The best year in video games, what they typically mean is is that it's not only a year that a lot of great classic video games came out in, but also a year that like you can kind of see like a seismic shift or change in video games occurring. Mm-hmm. Um, so something like uh, 1996 or 1998, as Bob said, that's when Pokemon came out and it oh, revitalized portable gaming. Hold on, and- I'm changing my answer again. It's 1996 again because in the Nihon, that's when Red and Blue, Red and Green, Red and Green came out. Well, 1996 was also, that's a good example because that's also when the Nintendo 64 debuted and we got Mario 64. Hell yeah, uh, we baby. Got, we got debuting franchises like Resident Evil, Crash Bandicoot. Hell yeah, baby. Uh, Tomb Raider. Woo! Uh, yeah. So 96 is a, is a very good year. Quake! Quake. Oh, yes. Very important for the PC gamers. Mm-hmm. Super Mario RPG. A lot of you nerds like that one. <laughs> Power Rapper the Rapper. We got Diablo. More PC gaming fodder for you idiots. Yeah. It was a great year for video games. Sonic 3D Blast. Yes. We'll forget about that one. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think this is a phenomenal year for games. But also 1998. I think they're pretty neck and neck. Because 1998, you got Ocarina of Time. As much as I shit on that game, gotta say, probably one of the best N64 games. If you have the time and want to walk around. Guide. <laughs> and the player's yeah. guide. StarCraft, Half-Life. I am changing my answer to 1998. Half-Life, groundbreaking for the games industry. Yes. Um, Metal Gear Solid. Another solid groundbreaking game for the video games industry. Resident Evil 2, groundbreaking game for us. Yes. Uh, Banjo-Kazooie, 1998. Uh, Thief, a game I always saw on the shelves, never knew anything about it. Left a really big impact on me, seeing it on the shelves. Very, very popular game for PC nerds. Pokemon here in America. Uh, 1080 Snowboarding, F-Zero X, Sonic Adventure, Spyro the Dragon, you dummy, Rogue (laughs) Squadron, tell me, also Pokemon Yellow apparently came out the same year, tell Mm. me why this isn't the best year for gaming. Why it isn't? Yeah, tell me, tell me why it isn't, I think this is the best year. Uh... 1998. I mean, it's definitely one of the best years. Mm-hmm. I think you got a lot of good, solid hitters. You got a lot of, you know, unquestionable classics. Um, I would say the biggest knock against 1998 is that that smack bang in the middle of your least favorite console generation. <laughs> <laughs> I listen. Part of this. Part of the stipulation here that you put in place is that it it could the year could just be groundbreaking for the games industry in general. 
And I think that as much as I don't like a lot of the 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 stuff in the N64 PlayStation 1 era, they were all groundbreaking for for the games industry. I think one of the most groundbreaking games, though, is Half-Life because of the control configuration it has on PC. Uh, It pretty much set it pretty much paved the way for for gaming after that um for 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 modern first person shooters um quake 2 also did that kind of uh and and, well the original quake kind of did but it was more the game came out and then the community did what they did with it and they turned it into something special Mm -hmm. Uh, half-life was the first one where they took all that information and made it into something great um anyway uh was there any uh I think the Game Boy Color was 1998, wasn't it? Um, no, I think that might have been 99 or 2000 even. Uh, too many. There's too many games. Oh, uh, yeah. oh no, uh, 98 in Japan came out here first. No, it came out in Japan first. Oh, it came out in 99. Wait, what did you say? What? What? Nine, it came out October ninety eight in Japan, uh, November eight, November ninety eight in North America, and all right. everywhere else. Game Boy Color, nineteen ninety eight. Tell me again yeah. why it's not the best year in video game history. Because because the Game Boy Color was a stopgap <laughs> system, Bob. <laughs> all right, what year did you say? What dog year did you say? Okay, 2004, butt munch. Because you <laughs> spent the whole time talking about how great Half-Life was. Yeah. And it is. But 2004 was Half-Life 2. All right. An even better no, game. Okay, That now. did more to push the industry forward in terms of storytelling, graphical fidelity, uh, the, the goddamn gravity gun, uh, things God like damn that. It. The, the invention is Steam, specifically to distribute Half-Life 2. Now that, didn't we hate that? <laughs> Everybody hated Steam. We were Everybody not about Steam. that at all. No, no, not at all. So, but it, was, it wasn't just Half-Life 2. Uh, there was also, uh, this was like the apex of that generation, the PS2, GameCube, original Xbox generation arguably the best generation ever for video gaming because that's the year you got halo 2 san andreas uh snake eater uh i like the original far cry uh on the pc side you had the original far cry unreal tournament 2004 uh doom 3 you had back on the console you had ninja the ninja gaiden reboot you had burnout 3 Fable, uh, Knights of the Old Republic 2. You had the Pokemon Leaf Green and Fire Red remakes. Oh, you had Metal Gear, uh, the Twin Snakes. And the Twins. We had the two Metal Gear games in the same year. Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. Yeah, everyone's favorite Paper Mario. Red Dead Revolver. Remember that game, everybody? Yeah. I you have. I might have to. Oh, and Metroid Zero Mission. Metroid Zero Wait. Mission, Metroid Prime 2 was also 2004. A lot of sequels. Yeah. Well, you know, it was the year, you know, all the sequels that came out this year were the best versions of these games. Halo 2 is a better Halo 1. San Andreas is the pinnacle of the Grand Theft Auto series of that generation. Half-Life 2, again. Uh, you spent you a know, lot of time talking about how Half-Life 2 changed PC gaming. Freaking World of Warcraft came out in 2004. I was, I was getting to that. <laughs> Uh, I, you know, of- you drive a hard bargain here. Doom three, let me tell you, not great. Did not like Doom three. Uh, as much as everybody loved Doom three when it came out, I thought I did not think. It was but, great. but it was, it was a big deal. It was, mm-hmm. it, you know, before Half Life came out, that was the game. If you wanted to test your PC, that was the game to get. Uh, I think when we bought it, we bought a PC that year, a family computer. And we asked him, will this be able to play Doom 3? And he said, yes. So we said, Dad, this is the one to get. <laughs> I I, uh, I got to be honest. I think you changed my mind. I think 2004 is, also, is a good year for video games. 
This is also the year that the D the original DS came out. Now, at the time, the original DS was like, the fuck is this thing? Mm -hmm. But like in a year or two, it would become the best-selling handheld of all time. So it all had to start somewhere, and it started here. Did we mention Burnout 3? Yes. That's a big deal game. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a, that, I think, I think, I think you, I think you may be coming around well. I think that was a solid year for video games. Also, I just want to point out from a personal perspective, I was there. Like I was there in 98 and 96 and whatnot, but I was a, a shitty 10 year old kid. <laughs> I was graduating high school at this time. So I was like alive and like aware of everything. I was there and I could feel just how like big all these game releases were. And how like upset I was that Resident Evil 4 got delayed until 2005. So I couldn't add that to my Christmas wish list. But I was there. And it was like just unlike anything I had felt in the game community at the point. You were you were cognizant. Yes. What year did Red Dead Redemption come out? I want to say 2009. I remember that being a huge year for video games. Yeah. Uh, was it 2009? I think it was 2009. 2009. It doesn't look like it was 2000. I don't see it on the. Uh, 2009 was also great. Yeah. Uh, Modern Warfare 2, Assassin's Creed 2, Batman Arkham Asylum, Uncharted yeah. 2, Borderlands, uh, New Super Mario Brothers, Left 4 Dead 2, Resident Evil Ooh. 5. We're going to forget about that. Halo yeah. DSC. We're going to forget about that. Uh, Red Dead Redemption was 2010. 2010. 2010. 2010 was a big deal for games. We had Mass Effect yes. 2, Red Dead Redemption, Call of Duty Black Ops, Super Mario Galaxy 2, World, uh, God of War 3, Halo Reach, uh, which wasn't, you know, that wasn't, like, incredible, but, uh, uh, well, no, never. I was going to say it had great multiplayer, but it was just the Halo 3 multiplayer. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh Limbo, uh Fallout New Vegas, Alan Wake, Starcraft 2, uh another Assassin's Creed game, uh BioShock 2, Heavy Rain, Amnesia, Super Meat Boy. Ooh. Dead Rising 2. This uh, Just Cause 2. This was a great year for video games also. Splinter Cell Conviction. Ooh. Uh So yeah, that was a that was that was also I, I remember that one being a, a jam packed yeah. year for video games. Uh, we had some more recent great years though. Yeah, like uh, like 20, the twenty seventeen, the launch of the Switch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the launch of the Switch had a lot of great stuff like uh, yeah, Breath of the Wild, Super Mario Odyssey, mm -hmm. both in the same year. Horizon Zero yeah. Dawn. Uh, yes. Resident Evil 7, uh, yes. Destiny 2, which wasn't that great, uh, <laughs> Nier Automata, uh, we're going to skip over Ra uh, Mario plus Rabbids, <laughs> but I was going to, oh, also uh, uh, Sonic uh, Mania. Oh, yeah. The one that came to mind that was more recent to me was uh, 2015. Yes. So we had... Uh, the reason this this is the biggest one in my head is because uh, I had a really hard time picking a game of the year this year because it was the year of Super Mario Maker, which yes. was like, like that was mind blowing to me because I love the original Super Mario Brothers. And now here it is a game with unlimited Super Mario Brothers levels. But it also was the same year of Metal Gear Solid 5. And I yeah. fucking loved that game, <laughs> even though it didn't have an ending. It just kind of yeah. just fizzled out. Uh, I loved the gameplay loop. I had a really hard time be be picking between those two games. Uh, but it also shows like the like the range that that year had. Yeah, because you you have those two, and you also have Bloodborne, which a lot of people still talk about. Yeah. Fallout Four. Uh, The Witcher, the Witcher three, yeah. Uh, uh, Rocket League. Oh yeah, 
uh batman arkham uh knight which i didn't like um splatoon which was that was that was a year when we went to e3 and i was like uh the 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 Nintendo E3 booth was all splatooned out, and this was a new IP. It was like, what yeah. the hell is Nintendo doing? What are they up to? That I've never heard of these people before. Why is this a big deal that they're that they're making a big deal about? And it ended up being a big deal game. Mm-hmm. Um, Ori and the Blind Forest, Undertale, Undertale. That's like a lot of people's favorite game of that generation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Dying Light, uh, Rainbow Six Siege, which when it came out was not great. Yeah. Uh, but they, they fixed it over time. Evolve. Remember Evolve? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Lego Dimensions. That was, and Disney Infinity 3.0. So that was like the height of the Toys to Life craze. Mm-hmm. Only uh, for it to immediately crash and burn the next year. <laughs> the Order 1886. That mm-hmm. got really bad reviews but i actually liked it i thought it was pretty good that game was a launch game that came out two years after the system yeah. launched yeah if it came out at um, launch it would have done really good it was just a tech yeah. demo really yeah um it was gorgeous yeah. though it was great yeah it was like watching a movie but you were playing the game yeah <laughs> Uh, so yeah i think uh i think 2015 is seriously up there 2015 is a good year, I for sure. I think of the years that are up there for best years in video game, I think you sold me on 24, uh, 2004. <laughs> I think you sold me on 2004 being probably the best year for video games. I think 1998 is a hard second. It's right up yeah, there also. I think 1998, you know, if you... You know, if you were, uh, you know, really stuck in your ways with 1988, I would not disagree with you because just looking back on it, so much happened that year. And, you know, like I said, 2004 was the apex of that generation. 98 was really the apex of the N64 PS1 generation. Mm -hmm. Like the games that came out, you know, they didn't get any better than those games. Uh, And I think... 2015 is also up there, even though it's, you know, it seems pretty recent, even though it was I think, six years ago. I think it's a good year. I don't know if I put it as like a top 10. I just, it just has so year. many. Oh, I would definitely put it in a top 10. Were you nuts? It has so like, many like groundbreaking games in it. True. But I feel like a lot of them are just like the best versions of games we'd already played. Yeah. What's wrong Whereas with that? The, well, the, you know, the other year is like there's genuinely something new and exciting about them. You, 2004 has, has sequels galore. Fair. I'm also looking at 1992 because I was like, we got to pull a little further back maybe. Yeah. Uh, 1992 has some great stuff. Uh, Kirby's Dream Land, uh, Super Mario Kart, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Dune 2? What? Dune? Dune, like the or... movie that just came out. Okay. So I actually know this. Um <laughs> there was a there was a series of games based on the original books of Dune, and Dune 2 is credited as being the original real-time strategy game. Oh. Like every real-time strategy game that you've played since 1991. Is basically just copying what Dune Two did. Interesting. That that I knew. Uh, looking at it now, we got 1991 has some great stuff. Street Fighter Two, Final yeah. Fantasy Four, uh, A Link to the Past, Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, uh, Metroid Two, Samus Returns, mm-hmm. Super uh, Castlevania Four. What about eighty nine? Super Mario Land, uh, DuckTales, woo. Woo. Mother. Or the Revenge of Shinobi. Let's oh, go. there you go. Oh, no, Shinobi 3 is the good one. I get them confused all the time. 
Uh, what about 85? That's the year of Super Mario Bros. Nothing That's, good. Well, well, no, but I feel like Super Mario Brothers is enough to carry 1985 yeah. <laughs> on its own. Yeah, I don't think I don't think you Zoomers understand how important that game is. Uh, Fadud Dud brings up 93, which has Doom, Star Fox, Secret of Mana, uh, Mist, Mortal Kombat 2, Super Mario All Stars, uh, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, mm -hmm. Kirby's Adventure, Sonic CD. There you go. Super Aladdin. Bomberman. Aladdin, big deal. Yeah. Big deal game. Uh, uh there's also 94. Which has Sonic 3, Doom 2, XCOM, Final Fantasy 6, Donkey Kong Country. That game was a big deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Killer Instinct, Tekken, uh, the original Warcraft, Super Metroid, Earthbound, Earthbound, Earthworm Jim, uh, yeah. Sonic and Knuckles. Yeah. Yeah. Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles came out the same year. Uh, X2, Lion King, Shaq Fu. You're leaving out Shaq Fu. Oh, I gotta forget about Shaq Fu. Bubsy 2. A lot of good Genesis stuff on this thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 94 was great. I still think of the 90s. 98 takes it. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Uh, 98 I'm takes it for the 90s. Uh, for the aughts, 2004 takes it. I'm uh, seeing a lot of, because uh, I pulled up some lists on like the best years of video games, and I'm seeing a lot of love for 2007. That was the year of the first Assassin's Creed, the first Mass Effect, the first Bioshock, uh, Call of Duty 4, the original Modern Warfare, Uncharted 1, Halo 3, Mario Galaxy, the Orange Box, specifically Portal. Yeah. Crisis One, Rock Band. Metro Prime Three. Yeah. This is yeah, this is a this is a solid year. So so Which is interesting because, you know, as we saw before, the N sixty four generation and the PS2 GameCube generation, those peaked toward the end. This generation looks like it peaked toward the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I still don't think it. Oh, wait, I'm looking at 98. Oops. Where's 2000? Uh... Yeah. Oh, this is 2004. This is 2007. Yeah. Uh, yeah, know, I, I still think 2004 is the better year. Overall, yeah. But 2007 a is a good contender, but uh, 2004 yeah. definitely takes, definitely beats it. Yeah. Um, so of the nineties, I think 1998 takes it of the yes. aughts. I think 2004 takes it, even though 2007 mm. did a pretty good job of yeah. the teens or of the tens. I think 2015, I don't, uh, I don't, I, I mean, we didn't really look too hard, uh, but, uh, either 2015, either 2015 or, Possibly even 2010. Yeah, 2010 was Straight also pretty good. 10. Yeah. What about 11? Uh, 11 had Skyrim. Uh, Skyrim. And Minecraft. Mm. I'm, go I'm going through a bunch right now. Yeah. Ooh, 2013. Bioshock Infinite. Dr uh, Grand Theft Auto Five, The Last of Us. Uh, Assassin's Creed Four, Tomb Raider, Ooh. Mario Three D World. Uh, Splinter Cell Blacklist. Get out of here. Um, never mind. I take it back. 20 2013 had some banging games. Yeah, and a lot of nothing else. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm sticking with uh I'm sticking with 2015. Okay. But 2017, I mean, we had the Switch and that had some that that was uh yeah. I think the Switch console itself uh carries a lot. Oh, definitely. 
Breath of the Wild and uh, Mario Odyssey at the same time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with uh, 2015 for that. But I think yeah. I think we can agree that the best year is probably 2004. Yeah, that was a. And we don't know much. We're we're not digging too deep back into the 80s or 70s. Yeah. Uh we don't we're we're not, we're not we were I mean there was barely, barely alive much games in the 70s. Yeah. Uh we were barely alive then. But yeah, 2004 I think for what it did uh for gaming in general. There's not a lot of Nintendo stuff. Nintendo took a break that year. <laughs> into that well yeah, that was during the GameCube era when they were like struggling yeah, uh, you said the the DS though the original DS. Yeah, the DS launched. Yeah, I mean I think that, you know, what that represented and what that was going to be going forward. Uh, and Paper Mario: Thousand Year Door. Yes, that's what Nintendo had. But other than that, I mean, there's a lot of phenomenal stuff here that that mm-hmm. we 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 love. And 2004 Unreal Tournament 2004, I played the shit yeah. out of that. Uh, so yeah, I think here at the Wolf Den, we're putting our seal on, on, uh, freaking the year 2004 as being the best year for video games. Yeah. Yet to be topped. Uh, I see a lot of people in the chat going off on their favorite years. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I was, I was taking a peek at some of them and I was, I was putting them in, uh, Crispy X is 1988. Super Mario Brothers 2, Super Mario Brothers 3, Mega Man 2, Blaster Master, Ninja Gaiden, Final Fantasy 2, Double Dragon 2. Not bad. Sounds sounds like a good list. Uh 1995 was the best year for video games, says Edward Bova. Uh in the 80s. Oh yeah. 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 Well, I don't know. I think 89 had a lot of great stuff. Um, there's mostly Game Boy stuff though. Uh, right. Eight, Eighty five really just had Super Mario Brothers, <laughs> and I guess the NES. Yeah, I mean, I guess that, I guess that's a kind of a big deal, bringing the NES over here to the states. I'm trying to think. Eighty seven had Contra, Punch Out, Double Dragon, Final Fantasy One, Castlevania Two. Uh, Sid Meier's Pirates, Afterburner, Mega Man 1, Metal Gear 1, Street Fighter 1, Fantasy Star 1, uh, R-Type 1, <laughs> Rad Racer 1. What uh, year is this? 87. 87. Mm-hmm. We're just going for our birth years. We're, we're arguing Shinobi about that. One. We're arguing which Shin- birth year is more important for video yeah. games right now. Doki Doki Panic. <laughs> You might you might get the better uh, birth year for video games then. Eighty seven sounds like it was better than eighty nine. Yeah, but you don't have Bob's like, Adventure though. Ooh, yeah, you you beat me there. But I got Goonies too. <laughs> Shit. Eighty six. I know it. It's always one of those things where I'm like, oh yeah, that's that, that's as old as me. Oh, it came out eighty six. Fuck. <laughs> 86 had Legend of Zelda, uh, Kid Icarus, Metroid 1, Adventure Island, uh, the the real Super Mario Brothers 2, Dragon Quest, or Dragon Warrior, uh, Castlevania, Alex Kidd and Miracle World, Outrun, Akari Warriors, Rampage. I think I think 80 I think 87 takes it. Yeah. Except I mean, your birth year is cool, but uh. Yeah. We have over here in eighty nine, we have a minesweeper. Ooh. That's a big Come one. On. It's got a three point six out of five on cool math games. <laughs> oh my god, you could play it in this website. Okay, get me out of here. I'm gonna freaking accidentally download JavaScript. <laughs> All right, I think we're good. I think we have determined yeah. that the best year of video games is 2004. And uh, yes. we want to know what your favorite year in video games is. Yeah. Uh, how are we going to do a poll for that one? 
Uh, because you only get seven. You only get seven options. Uh, you want to do a range? Yes. Do uh generation. Just... No, why don't we? Why don't we just pick a bunch of random years that we just talked about? <laughs> okay. Like eighty set. We got eighty seven. We got ninety. What was it? Eighty. 98, yeah. So 87, 98, uh, 2004, 2015. Oh, let me write this all down. <laughs> um, 87. There was another 90s. There was another 90s one that was good. Was it 94? Let me see. Yes. Yes. So, so 87, 94. 98, 04, 07. Uh, 2015. And 2010. Okay. Put, put 2010 in there. Okay. Done. Done. Boom. Is there is there room for any more? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Nope, that's it. All right. Good. We're done. That's it. There's your poll, guys. Right. Get to it. Get to it. And if you didn't like any of them, don't vote. Yes. <laughs> Don't vote. Just yeah, you heard us on election day. Don't vote. <laughs> if yeah, if you don't like any, if you don't like any of the voting options, just become a libertarian. Yep. <laughs> uh, all right. Where did I leave off on the notifications? I left off on in the wild. Thanks for gifting us up. I appreciate it. Uh, the man. Thanks for the two months. New to the channel. Love what you guys put out. How long you guys been doing it? Too long. <laughs> we started in 2013 yep that many years uh yeah. the uh i read that one already but thank you for the two months prod prince thanks for the 100 bits was easily the best oh 2010 was easily the best all right well you can vote in the poll then yeah over on our spotify page for wolfden podcast Thrill House 1980X with the five months. I'm showing up a bit late tonight, but I'm happy to see Will hasn't been replaced by Chris Pratt. You don't know that. He, Chris Pratt's a method actor. Yeah, you saw that way he lost just to play Star Lord. You don't Knucker know what he's of. with four months says, Just got my ass kicked by Scootish and Mario Party. Good, you deserve it. Everybody needs to get slapped around every once in a while, you know? It's good for the soul. Good for the soul. I actually heard uh, E was sitting next to me watching Jackson, and I heard Jackson yelling at you. <laughs> um. Anyway, oh, and L J W V U. Thank you for the four months. Thanks for all the great content, fellas. Well, thank you for supporting. You're welcome, and for being here and watching. I appreciate. It. All right, we got a lot of topics to plow through. Yes, and an hour left in the show. So I guess we don't oh, have to boy. plow through anything. Uh, we could just take our leisurely time here. Uh, here's a big important one. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of retro stuff. Yeah. This we Goldeneye we, 007 for the N64. No longer banned in Germany after active involvement from Nintendo. We put this in at the at the at the eleventh hour, right before yeah. we went live. Um, I don't know anything about this. Did you look into this at all? Uh. I did. I had another article in here that you replaced with this one. Oops. Oh, did you move? Oh no, no, it's it's just lower. It's lower in the in it's the lower. Key. Yeah. Okay. I just so I'll bump that up. So, long story short, we talked about this a few weeks ago with uh, Dying Light on the Switch. Germany has very strict uh, censorship laws with regards to video games. They they've been known to like outright ban things from the country if it's too violent or it has like any like bad imagery um and goldeneye from the n64 uh was banned in germany uh i guess probably for like excessive violence or whatnot um silly things like that uh it appears however that uh goldeneye 007 is no longer banned from being sold advertised or marketed to minors in germany this follows a twenty. This follows twenty four years of it being banned 
uh, being banned media uh, in the country. Uh, what's interesting about this unbanning, however, is that it's going to happen automatically next year at... Sorry. What's interesting is that this was going to happen automatically next year as media on that list is removed after 25 years. Uh, this is according to Eurogamer Germany. However, someone or some entity stepped in early to get the game unbanned. We don't know who uh, or what company decided it was time for, to free Goldeneye from this banned list, but there's a lot of speculation online that this might be Nintendo's doing, possibly for the Switch Online and 64 expansion pack. Theory crafting time. It's Let's theory it. crafting time. Will, here's what is happening with yes. GoldenEye and Nintendo. They're making a Nintendo Classic console. Ooh. A Nintendo well, 64 mm. Classic console. And that is why they got uh, they got it unbanned. I don't know if I agree with that. Because the NES Classic and the SNES Classic, the only reasons why those came out the years it did was to fill a, a hole in Nintendo's holiday lineup. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the NES Classic came out in 2016 when they had nothing. Mm -hmm. And the SNES Classic came out in 2017, which, yes, they had the Switch, but they probably didn't know if that was going to be the global success that it, it wound up being. So they probably had the SNES Classic planned... Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. from the beginning, just to get it out the door as a safeguard. Um, so I don't know if I agree. I don't think Nintendo's in a position where they need to do that. However, I do think adding GoldenEye to Switch Online makes a lot of sense and could definitely be something they would want to do. My question... I have two questions then. What does this mean for... Microsoft? Yes. And who exactly gave the okay for this? Because I know people, like, Rare made an HD remake of GoldenEye. They, may, they actually made it. And mm -hmm. they were going to put it on Xbox Live, but for one reason or another, they didn't. A lot of people are assuming Nintendo is the reason why GoldenEye is, was not on Xbox Live. What they don't seem to factor into the equation is Eon Productions, the company that actually owns the James Bond license. They are very strict when it comes to licensing out James Bond, uh, especially in the video game realm. They don't see Bond in video games as like, something that you can like enjoying the classics of it. They just want to focus on what the latest James Bond video game is. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. They, they, they don't so, care about the, their, their archive games or, or their yes, vault, which is weird because they're all about their fucking movie archive. It's um, like Nintendo. But anyway. Yeah. But anyway, so I believe that Eon productions is the reason why we never got that golden eye. Uh, remake because at the time Activision had the James Bond license and they just wanted Activision to make games based on the Daniel Craig Bond so they made Golden Eye Activision remade Golden Eye with Daniel Craig in it right it's just as good everybody loves um, that one <laughs> and you know and what sucks about that game is it's not a bad game but you're like this isn't the Golden Eye I grew up with <laughs> yeah the whole time anyway and then Activision just like shat out, shat on that license like they do all their licenses. Um, but regardless, now that IO Interactive is making James Bond games, I wonder if there's like a new era going on at Eon where they're like looking into the video. Because it's been 25 years since Goldeneye. That's a lot. That's an entire generation. So mm -hmm. I'm sure there are people working there who are like saying we should do something with GoldenEye. It's everybody's favorite Bond game. So, so, so the reason why I spat out Nintendo 64 Classic Console is because, one, we already have the controller. It's already yes. there. It's already made. 
no one's buying that thing for the Nintendo <laughs> Sw- <laughs> Switch Online. There's a, I'm sure you, you, everybody in this community is seeing people getting it in their grubby hands. It sold out very quickly. It popped up today again, and I, I managed yeah. to get two. Um, but uh, it immediately sold out again. Uh, they're not making that many of them. It's expensive. The general, the average consumer is not buying this thing, that controller. Yeah. Um, so they have the technology uh, for the controller at least. Um, Nintendo likes Nintendo does put third party stuff on uh, their classic consoles more so than they do Nintendo Switch Online. So that's why I'm thinking maybe they managed to get a little more money out of out of the classic consoles. So that's why I'm thinking instead of putting it on Switch Online, you put it on a classic console, and that's how you sell the classic console, even to the same people who already have Nintendo Switch Online. Although right. GoldenEye would be a banging success on Nintendo Switch Online because of that multiplayer. You'll be able to play yeah. multiplayer online with other people. Yeah. Um, but Anyway, the the I mean, they are getting a lot of money for the expansion pack, so hopefully they'll get some, we'll see some more licensed stuff. But uh, in the past, they've gotten more licensed stuff on the classic consoles. I yeah. would much rather this be on Nintendo Switch Online. It'd be cool to have yeah. a classic console, but I don't want to pay for one. I'd much rather have it. I I think Nintendo Switch yeah, Online. It'd be much more convenient. Yeah, Nintendo Switch Online is better than having a classic console, even though especially I mean, like if they have the, the online, online functionality because you can't yeah. play online on a classic console. Correct. So, absolutely, do this. Uh, as as for the licensing issues with GoldenEye, uh, we always just chalked it up. Like we haven't seen GoldenEye since it came out. Yeah. Uh, aside from the stupid remix, uh, we always just chalked it up as licensing hell. Because there's all, yeah. like, f- f- from f- from our perspective, outsiders looking in, you you see, the, you, like, you look at it and you have Nintendo, Rare, who is owned by Microsoft, and Activ- mm-hmm. how, where did Activision come into play? Activision had a, had a hand in it. And then you so, also and- have uh, the, the, the people who own the rights to 007. Yeah. Yeah, because... After Rare, the the Bond license went to EA. They had it for years. And then it went to Activision. They had it for years. And now it's at IO Interactive. So it just kept hopping. The, the Bond license kept hopping around between different studios. And you really can't make a Bond game without talking to one of those studios. Yeah. There, so the, the, just be and as an outsider looking in it looked like there was just a lot of yeah. players in the game that need to either be paid or okay it so that's why we haven't yeah. seen anything happen with goldeneye in a while uh but the again the interesting thing about this particular case is that somebody decided to request that goldeneye uh gets unbanned in germany yes uh it's said Early. Yeah, the article says it was going to automatically be unbanned next year. I saw somewhere yeah. else that it said it would be up for uh, unbanning next year, but they requested right. to do it earlier. Uh, so, I mean, I I think this means that we're that we're getting something. Why else oh, would they yeah. do that? Who cares? Like yeah. they're not if they're not selling the original N sixty four cartridge still. Yeah. So. Uh, I would say all signs are pointing to Nintendo, um, yeah. and probably but, Nintendo Switch Online. But I, I would know. imagine like Microsoft has a stake in this game because they own Rare. So I would imagine Microsoft is going to want this game on Xbox somehow. Mm-hmm. They know how big how big of a deal this this game is. They're going to want to figure out how they can get this on Xbox Live. Uh, so we don't have this as an article, but I will put this. I'll, I'll put this in there as as a, as a topic, uh, mm-hmm. right under uh, the GoldenEye situation. Uh, we already know what a lot of the upcoming N sixty four games are going to be on Nintendo Switch Online. Yes, uh, thanks to some data miners. Uh, Game Rant says Nintendo Switch Online leak teases more N64 games, and the the header image is Smash Brothers. 
<laughs> that will be such a huge fucking deal. Oh yeah, Smash Brothers is going to be great online as uh, playing it with other people. I mean, I know Nintendo's not; it doesn't have the best online infrastructure, but uh, I, when I was playing with my friends, everything ran great because uh, I mean, I just assume we all have good internet. Uh, yeah. If you're going to be playing with randos, you might have a bad time. If you want to play with friends, you'll probably have a good time. Anyway, there are th- at least 38 Nintendo 64 games that are going to be added to the expansion pack by the time it's all done. Uh, data mining evidence uh, suggests that not only will this include previously confirmed games like The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, which was in the little trailer for Nintendo Switch Online, yeah. but also titles like Wave Race, the N64 Mario Party trilogy of games, and the original Super Smash Brothers. This was shared by Monda Mega on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh so far, Nintendo confirmed that seven additional Nintendo 64 titles would be on the Nintendo Switch Online, The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, uh, Banjo Basa- Kazooie, F Zero, right. uh, Kirby 64. Those are the games that like have already been confirmed. So here's his tweet. Uh, Mondo, Ma- Mondo Mega says uh, initial data mining from the N64 app is somewhat fruitful. Going by the game IDs, there's at least 38 Nintendo 64 titles planned for Nintendo Switch Online. The list is alphabetical, so you can fill in some of the gaps already. 37 is Majora's Mask, uh, 32 is Smash, 33 is Wave Race, blah, blah, blah. Uh, So, I don't know how they found this, but it looks like they were able to put it into an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, And it's alphabetical. Yeah. So there's a bunch of gaps where the games haven't been announced yet. So they were able to just kind of figure out what's going to be what it's what's going to be there, you know. They also uh, found 52 Sega Genesis games are uh scheduled. That's a lot. Yeah. Well, there was a lot there were a lot more games on the Genesis than there were on the N64. Yeah, but they those are bigger licensing issues for Nintendo. True. I, I guess I guess maybe they're easier to get because they're uh yeah. sixteen bit. They're side they're mostly, you know, side scrolling and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um Yeah, I don't see any I don't think they uh it didn't look like they uh named specific games though for, for, for Mega Drive. Yeah. There's there's between Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and Strider, there are two spots. <laughs> you watch, it's gonna be Sonic Spinball and Sonic 3D Blast. Shit. Why'd you why'd you ruin it? Because No way in hell we're getting Sonic 3. Yeah. No way in hell. No, I mean we are getting no. it on that other collection. We're getting it, yeah. Which is a miracle. Yeah. Uh but anyway. Uh, it looks like we're getting a lot of probably good stuff with Nintendo Switch Online yeah. uh, in the future. Exciting. But that doesn't mean go out and buy Nintendo Switch Online for the stuff that we might get in the future. Because who knows? It might take freaking two years for all this stuff to come out. Yeah. Um. Also, according to comicbook.com slash gaming, mm-hmm. uh, next Nintendo Switch Online console potentially leaked. What? Uh Nintendo Switch Online now has N64 and Genesis games, courtesy of Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pack. Right now, the current ex- expectation is the service will be expanded with more platforms, but this hasn't been confirmed. However, the files of the N64 app suggest that's what is happening. A huge data mining leak that revealed the N64 and Sega Genesis games coming to the service. In the future, dat- data miners have pointed out that each game listed have all IDs on the... Uh, have all have IDs for each platform, and these IDs are represented by numbers. For example, 2 is SNES, 3 is N64, and 5 is Sega Genesis. I actually did hear about this. Right now, there's no 4 platform, which, of course, suggests one will be added in the future. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, you, you get the idea. Uh, recent rumors have suggested Nintendo Game Boy is the next console for Nintendo Switch Online. Other rumors have suggested it will be Nintendo GameCube. For many, this data mining discovery reinforces those rumors. However, it's worth noting 
that alongside the number nine, the number four is considered unlucky in Japan. So there's a chance mm. it was skipped for this simple reason. I think she is the is the is the no no word in Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> uh so yeah, that is uh that th that's possible. They just skipped it because it's unlucky. I think personally, the uh three all stars collection was mm -hmm. made using emulators. Like right. Super Mario Super Mario Sunshine was also emulated. So right. I think they just have GameCube emulation already, and that is four. That they just I, yeah. I, it doesn't mean that necessarily we'll get GameCube as a uh, Nintendo Switch Online console. I just think yeah. in their back end, when they're making the architecture for their freaking uh, retro games library. I just think GameCube is labeled four because they just, they, yeah. they have an emulator for it already and they made it four. That's what I think. Well, that is their fourth home system. So true. Makes sense. Uh, while I was trying to find that article you were reading, according to comicbook.com slash gaming, Arcade 1-Up is going to release a Terminator 2 Judgment Day arcade cabinet. I did see that. I did see that as well. With the guns and everything. Holy shit. Um, I'm going to have to start a, I'm going to have to start that OnlyFans if I want that <laughs> Proton Pack and this. $700. Oh, oh gee, oh my. Uh, I like a couple of arcade cabinets. I have that Atari one. It's you not do. an arcade cabinet. It's just the sticks. I I want yeah. somebody to build me an arcade for it. To just plop it in. I just need a woodworker to like build an arcade around it. Yeah. Any takers. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, anyway, it would be great to have Game Boy games on Nintendo Switch Online. But in this yeah. case, I really do think that it's just Game Boy. And I don't think it means anything. Anyway, uh, we got Chris BX with 39 months. Thank you very much. I appreciate you, Chris BX. Um, next news. We have Nintendo Switch. Switch. Nintendo, Switch uh, uh, Nintendo Switch has been selling, outselling everything up until this month. Now, all yeah. of a sudden, things are not looking good anymore. <laughs> Nintendo Switch production will fall 20% below its original projection this fiscal year. The total number of units produced for the console will now only be 24 million through March. According to a report from Nikkei, the issue comes uh, from a shortage of... This is awkward, but it looks like you're using ad blocker. We get it, but <laughs> IGN can't live without ads, and ad blocker can. You use ad blocker? <laughs> I had it in Firefox because I take screenshot. If Firefox has a built-in screenshot taker, mm. and the ads like interfere with that, mm -hmm. so I put ad blocker in so I can get cleaner screenshots. So I'm sorry if I have to use ad blocker for screenshots. Anyway, <laughs> uh, the issue comes from a shortage of semiconductors and other electronic parts, as well as strong demand for the console, such as the latest OLED version. Around spring, components such as microcomputers caused production bottlenecks, and Nintendo scaled down its production targets because the company was not able to get enough parts. The original plan was to produce around 30 million Switch units, a record number due to more people spending time at home during the pandemic. So, yeah. The semiconductor shortage has finally hit Nintendo. Uh, I mean, I assume that they were kind of feeling it behind the scenes like that's yeah. why we got basically the same console re-released again with a slightly bigger screen uh yeah. and and for more money uh but it looks yeah it looks like i guess they're ramping down which kind of yeah. sucks because i i feel like this holiday season is going to be another big big one for nintendo it well, like what do uh, they have what games do they have uh mario party holiday uh, True. Dread, uh, Metroid Dread. But, but Dread is like, you know that that's more of a hardcore series. Like, you know, if if you don't know about it, then you don't know about it. Although, you know, 
people have been like showing a lot of interest in it, I guess. So, so a lot so more interest than they usually do in Metroid. Metroid historically sells pretty poorly as far as Nintendo IPs go. However, I think Metroid yeah. Dread has a good opportunity to break through that. Mm-hmm. Um, because just all, it, the install base is just insanely big. Um, yeah. Anyway, Mario Party, Super Mario 3D World came out at the beginning of the year. Uh, let's not count that one out. Uh, True. Pokemon, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl have yet to come out. They'll be out, I think, like next week. Um, oh, wow. Pokemon Snap, uh, Mario Golf, um, some Monster Hunter nonsense, uh, Skyward Sword. Uh, mm-hmm. So there was a lot. But, but you know, it's freaking Nintendo. So people get it for the for the games that it has already. Um right. I think that it, it looks like the PlayStation 5 is going to is going to take it for the year. It's probably going to be the best co- selling console of the holiday season. Yeah. But I think that the Nintendo Switch is still going to sell an insane amount. I don't think I don't think the PlayStation 5 is taking sales away from the Nintendo Switch. Um Yeah. I, I think that they're both going to... I think this is just going to be a great year for, for game console sales in general, just all around. I think everybody's mm-hmm. just going to be spending money, uh, especially because we're just getting over the pandemic and everybody's got a bunch of disposable income now. So, yeah, uh, yeah I think this is going to be... Uh, I, I I think that's also going to contribute to the chip shortage. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, I It... it Kind of sucks that they got to ramp down. I don't. Again, I don't think it's they're ramping down because they're going to sell less. I think that they that they just can't get. They just the, physically the can't. Yeah. Yeah, which is unfortunate. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, uh, next we what Uncharted? What? Uh, not the movie. So don't worry about it. Uh, Skydance Media announced the collaboration with Marvel Entertainment today, though it's not. Re- Uh, ready to reveal further details about which Marvel characters might be involved in this endeavor. All we know is that uh, it is uh, being marketed as a narrative-driven blockbuster action-adventure game and a completely original story and take on the Marvel Universe. And the head writer of this project is Amy Henning, uh, the creator of the Uncharted series, um, who who wrote the first three Uncharted games, she left during the making of Uncharted 4 because she had a disagreement with uh, the higher-ups at Naughty Dog. But she has also been involved in franchises like Jack and Daxter and The Legacy of Cain. She was working on the Visceral Game Star Wars project before that got shut down as well. Uh, so Skydance is a movie studio. Is it? Yes. Oh. Well, they make games. Yeah. Skydance part- has historically been a movie production company responsible for films like Mission Impossible, Star Trek, Top Gun, and Terminator Dark Fate. But it also has one relatively successful video game with uh, Walking Dead Saints and Sinners available now on PSVR for our PlayStation Plus. Oh, my God. That's it? Wow. Yeah. Uh, they they also made Archangel and PWND, which I guess means pwned, but uh, it doesn't. those don't have links on... on uh, yeah, on uh, Wikipedia, uh, Liam Robertson had a had a take on this on Twitter that I saw the other day. Uh, so Marvel Entertainment tweeted, "We're excited to partner with Skydance on an incredible new Marvel game project." Mm-hmm. And then Liam Robertson quote tweeted and said, "Skydance is the same company that hired John Lester to run its animation side right after he was removed from Pixar for being uh, a sex a serial sexual harasser." And there he is, there's a picture of him. Yeah, looking. looking John Lasseter looking just great. Um, uh, so g- grabbing, kissing, making comments about physical attributes. Cool, dude. Um, yeah, he 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 brought you Toy Story. <laughs> did he? Yeah, this, he uh, he got a start at Pixar. Wow, yeah, all, all your favorite Pixar movies, he had a hand in. I'm not going to make a joke. I was going to make a joke. Yeah. You set me up for a joke and I'm not going to do I it. I know. I know. I, I never regret it, but. Uh, so that sucks. Uh, I don't know how to feel about this. There's like, they made one game ever. So like, uh, it's probably not going to be a good game. 
Amy Henning's great though, so I don't know what the deal is with that. I mean, that's the thing though. Like a lot of these big companies, they just go for names in the games industry and just throw a shit ton of money at them, and then they make garbage. So I mean, <laughs> uh, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I, 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 I'm not optimistic about about what they could end up doing here. I think Will froze. Either that or he's just totally uninterested in what we're in what we're talking about. Anyway, next we have Sony's October state of play. I don't think there was anything good. So I don't know why we'll put this in the keep. Uh, I'm going to leave the call and join it again. Nope. That's uh, all right. That's a solo show today, boys. Uh, what do we have here? Uh, in the state of play that... So I, I heard the state of play was happening. And then I completely ignored it. Because the state of plays have been garbage. Except for the last one. Like this one. Not this one, but the one before it. Had some pretty good stuff. Uh... And this happened, and then I didn't hear anything about it at all. And in fact, I forgot about it completely until just this moment. Uh, and there's nothing really uh, great going on here. Will has completely left me. Will is just shook. Yeah, he's shook by all the phenomenal games that were released in the state of play. Uh... Will has left Wolf 10 once again. <laughs> oh, no. There's his little icon. Anyway, we got Death Verse, Let It Die. I've never heard of this before in my life. Uh, it was announced today and looks all right. The trailer sh <laughs> it looks all right, exclamation point. The trailer showed off some melee combat and some amount of personality. Per the trailer, it'll launch spring 2022. What did I miss? Uh, the state of play, the entire state of play. Oh, uh, it, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> did you even watch it? I did. No, I did. I actually did. I was just saying I heard about it, decided not to watch it because they've usually been bad. Uh, and then never heard about it again until just this moment. <laughs> yeah, no, it was like Sony had that one really good state of play. Um, and everyone was like, because they showed off God of War and all this other cool stuff. And then they went back to showing like their weird stuff that nobody really cares about. So I heard about, well, I just talked about uh, Death Verse, Let It Die. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at We Are OFK. I actually saw the trailer of this. I thought it was a TV show. Uh, hold on, let me bring the article up my computer this... just like hard crashed oh cool yeah so i had to like completely reboot so oh we are ofk oh yeah i didn't know what the hell this was it's like some ad for a band i've never heard of yeah so so this is an episodic narrative adventure game about a real indie band in la which is interesting this is a weird article yeah um looks charming for sure yeah, I thought it was a TV show about a band, and they were gonna try to make a band that's like the like 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 whoever made the show is gonna try to make a band like the Gorillas, like a yeah. cartoon band that you then get interested in. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't really, uh, I don't really yeah. understand. Uh, but it's a, it's an episodic adventure game. Apparently, it's. Not I thought a TV it was gonna, gonna be a cool. I thought it was gonna be cool, like story driven game about. You know, like a like sort of a meta game about creating a video game, but no, it's like some weird vanity project. Yeah, it's very pretty looking. Uh, it's it's got an interesting animation style. It's like three D, yeah. but not. It's cool. Uh, then we got Bug Snacks, the Isle of Bug Snacks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess it's a Bug Snacks update. There's a Bug Snacks update yeah. titled "The Isle of Bug of Big Snacks." Oh, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm stupid. Uh, coming in 2022, it's adding base building and big prehistoric uh, bug snacks, which seems neat. What, this this is like the lowest effort Kotaku article I've ever read before. 
they keep adding like a little like a uh, like a little tinge of like personality or like a little tinge. It, of, it like, was it was one of the best articles I could find that just had a list of all the games that were shown off because yeah. most people usually just do one or two or they give every game its own article. No, I'm down with that, but but the the little like like injection of of uh yeah. of like editorialism like it seems like they're they're not trying too hard. <laughs> they're like yeah. completely underwhelmed by this uh by this uh uh state of play. Yeah. Anyway, I li- I wish I liked Bug Snacks more than I did. I I liked the idea of Bug Snacks a lot, but the game yeah. I actually wasn't that into. Uh Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. Do we know AKA about this? Five Nights, Five Nights at Freddy's, the actual game. Oh, oh, yeah, we did know about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, we did know about that. Where you can actually move around and stuff. Yes. Uh, wow, turns out these games look way better when not made by a weird Christian dude. Sony also announced the game's December 16th release date. <laughs> That's what the fucking article says. Yeah. Wait, and then they, the weird Christian dude is a link. It's a link to, uh, like, I guess just recapping how Scott Cawthon, the creator of Five Nights at Freddy's, has donated a lot of money to Republicans. Oh, okay. Yeah. We don't like that. Cawthon responded to the backlash with a lengthy post on the Five Nights at Freddy's subreddit expressing love for his LGBTQIA plus fans and shock at the angry responses he received. Okay, good for you. Um, donate to we had, some LGBT plus charities. Yeah, you won't. Uh, Death's Door. You, yeah, you know, that's where I, we left off. I was I was expecting you to read it. Oh, sorry. Uh, very pretty Zelda S top down action RPG. Death Store is coming to PS4 and PS5. This is great for people who love this game, and I am personally excited to play it. Plus, you get a free game for pre ordering. Oh, that's nice. What do you get for pre ordering? Did they say? Uh, I don't remember them saying anything. <laughs> what a weird article. Oh, you get Titan Souls. Titan Souls is sick. Oh, there you go. Titan Souls is awesome. What year did Titan Souls come out? I don't know. 2015. Oh, bringing it back. And that's when I got the Vita. I got a Vita specifically for this game because it was cross oh, uh, remember, yeah. progression. It was cross yeah. save. Um, is it by the same guys? Is that why? It looks pretty Probably. similar. I might yeah. have to get Death's Door. Oh, it's an RPG. Ew. But I might. Ew. It, it actually, it looks yeah. pretty similar to Titan Souls. I might have to. I might have to try it out. Uh, Cart Rider Drift. Uh, so we got enough card games, guys. <laughs> I mean, I saw this and I'm like, who is this for? <laughs> like, it's. I know it's hard enough. So you got Mario Kart. Yeah. The kart racing game. How hard? Mm-hmm. Like. It's it's almost impossible to like compete with Mario Kart. But if you don't have a, a Switch, you need a kart racing game. But on PS4, you got Crash Team Racing. You have, I think there's a uh whatchamacallit? A little big planet kart racer out there. There are other kart racers. What the hell is this? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I I draw. I friggin' just completely zone out when I see a kart racer because I just assume yeah. that they're that they're ripping off Mario Kart or I, at least in some way. I'm sure that there's there's yeah. a lot of kart racers that put a little twist on it. Yeah, but it's not enough. Like it's still just Mario Kart. Um. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not into that. Um. And then, uh, oh no, we gotta read. We gotta read what the article says. Do you like Do you... riding little carts? Maybe you'll be into this. Regardless of your feelings, it's entering beta soon. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, then King of Fighters 15. Uh, okay. Yep. The 2D playing, 3D looking King of Fighters 15 looks gorgeous and is going into open beta on PS4 and PS5 November 19th. 
the 2D playing, 3D looking. Go get out of here. So uh, it's just the you could have just said the the fighting game because I don't know I don't even know aside from Soul Calibur if there still are 3D fighters out there. Tekken, but it's it, it's I just Smash Bros. I just yeah. <laughs> I just don't I I don't I don't like that. First class trouble. The PS Plus game for the month. ah oh wait it's PS it was PS Plus and it was in the state of play wow. Yeah. This is a multiplayer deduction game that looks kind of like Group Hitman. Someone tries to make one of these every few years, and aside from Among Us, they've never really taken off. Maybe this will be the one. It'll be free for PlayStation Plus subscribers. Okay. There you go. That was a good description. Star Ocean, The Divine Force. I don't know anything about Star Ocean. Uh, this is a relatively pretty JRPG with a long franchise pedigree. It, in all honesty, it looks pretty bad in this trailer, but maybe it's just an iffy first look. It's due out sometime in 2022. You know, Kyle Belmont brings up a good point. Smash is mm-hmm. also 2D. <laughs> Smash is a game that is both 2D and 3D. Well, uh, but, but that's like the, 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 uh, the recent Mortal Kombat, they, they use 3D polygonal character models, but the perspective is two dimensional. Well, well, n- well, no, that is 3D. Smash Brothers literally has stages where the characters aren't 3D anymore; they're just two dimensional, and the move wait. moves work differently. I swear to God, I know it's it's very wait, confusing. Did you say that Mortal Kombat was th- was 3D? Which Mortal Kombat are we talking about? The new one. The, the newer ones. You said that the characters are 3D. The, the characters are 3D models, but you fight on a 2D plane. Like a 2D fight. Like, like a, like a like fighter. A, like, a, like, like Tekken. Like a classic fighter, yeah. Yeah. Well, Tekken is 3D. Tekken is... You can move in the... Th- I'm pretty sure... Someone correct me or not, but I well, think in Tekken you can move in the three-dimensional space. I'm, tr- I'm trying to avoid the, the 2.5D argument. Like I like, know I don't like Metroid is a 3D game. <laughs> you move you is you're side scrolling, but it's a 3D game. Right. Metroid Metroid Dread so, is 3D. So that's why I'm saying Mortal Kombat is 3D. Mortal Kombat is 3D. But I'm trying to distinguish the fact. I'm trying to distinguish between traditional fighters where it's side on, like Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter, and Games where you use the entire 360 degree base, like Tekken, yeah, and Soul Calibur. That's called side scrolling. <laughs> so you have side scrolling fighters and full 3D fighters, I guess. Yes. Okay. You can't. You can't say 2D and also 3D. However. Smash Brothers actually is 2D and also 3D because there's, I think, two well, stages. No, because... no, listen, I have to finish Wait. this thought. There's literally stages where the character models are flat. They change the character models to be flat on certain stages. So I'm I'm not going to bring up 2.5D. All I'm saying is that for a game like Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter... You only have access to two dimensions, height and length, mm-hmm. even though your character models are 3D polygonal models. Mm-hmm. Whereas a game like Tekken or Soul Calibur, you have access to height, length, and depth. Mm-hmm. So it's 2D versus 3D, not in terms of what your character models are made out of, but how you what you know axes you have access to while playing the game metroid dread is still a 2d game because you can only really go you only have access to the vertical and horizontal no axes no 2d refers to 2d and 3d refers to the graphics period full stop the 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 way that you move in the game is side scrolling that's where Side- we get into the 0.5D argument. Uh, no, 0.5D is... Because that used to mean something completely different until now. So 0.5D has like a meaningless title. 
I'm just I'm referring to specifically how you play the game. So a side scroller, by definition, is a two dimensional type of game. It's a two D game. Not if it's rendered in three D, like Metroid Dread. You can't call Metroid Dread a two D game because it's not a two D game. It's three D game. Call it a three D. Can you call it a three D game? Do you have access to depth? The, the in the red the way it's rendered yes the way it's rendered but in terms of the actual gameplay it's a 3d side scroller <laughs> and uh. sma- and my argument what i was my point i was trying to say is smash brothers ultimate is both because there's some stages that are literally rendered in 2d for some fucking stupid reason but Smash Brothers Ultimate is still ultimately a 2D game because you only have access to vertical and horizontal axes. Uh, you in, in in I don't even think this is an opinion, but you have access to the Z axis because it's rendered in it. So so it's but it's a 3D gameplay. rendered game. Not during gameplay. It's 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 there. It's there, it's there, and it's also there it's, in Mortal Kombat. But you don't have access not, to it, which makes it side scrolling, because you only move a, side to side. So it's a side scrolling 3D game, is what you're trying to tell me. Yes, 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 yes. But and if you hear the term 2.5D. X out of the articles, trash article. <laughs> I still think it's valid to call a side scroller a 2D game, even though it's rendered in 3D. I don't like that. Because, like that. because you have access to because you only have access to two of the three dimensions. The but 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 then like like for example, that Rocket Knight remake. Yes. Is 3D. Yeah, because you have access to a third dimension in that. Not the way I saw it. There was one level where it goes behind you. The camera moves behind you a little bit. Okay, fine. Uh, uh, but no, because... because uh, Okay, imagine that level's not there. I think being able to say that it's, that it's a 3D side-scroller is a good distinction between saying that it's... Because that's the way it was... It, it's it's up-res. It's rendered differently. Right. Than it was when it was just sprites that were two dimensional. And lastly, we have Little Devil Inside. <laughs> this game, if nothing else, has a really cool aesthetic. You're a tilt shifted bounty hunter. That's neat. It's very surprising to see something like this as the big closer for a small press conference. Yeah, it's beautiful. What a beautiful looking game. Oh, wait. What no, a, I remember yeah. this. I remember this game. I, this game yeah. looked pretty cool. Yeah, it looked a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Full chickens bringing so. up Donkey Kong Country. Donkey Kong Country is 2D <laughs> because the, the the there's the fucking sprites are only 2D. No, Donkey Kong Country had 3D 3D character models. They, but that was they the whole were point. but they were they were f- f- basically flattened. They weren't actually being rendered in real time while you were playing the game. No, they were pre-rendered, right? That yes, yes. Because if because if you call that 3D, then you have to call the original Mortal Kombat a full motion video. Because <laughs> those those sprites are full mo- are actual pictures of people. True. I'm I'm gonna fight somebody about okay. next time I hear 2.5D. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking go. Look, I'm not trying to trigger you with 2.5D. I'm just trying to say that I think it's valid to call games like Metroid Dread and certain fighting games 2D. That, but that's of, that's where you fall down that rabbit hole. Is the 2.5D situation? Right. That's where that's well, where people we, try to make this distinction between games that are 3D and games that are side scrolling. Well, you just have to be smart enough to sidestep that. But you can't because you don't have access to the third dimension. <laughs> <laughs> what what dr- what drove me insane just now 
is this article saying the 2D playing 3D looking King of Fighters. Well, it's 2D playing because you, you only have access to the, to the side-scrolling part of it. And it's 3D die. looking because they use 3D polygonal models. I don't like it. I don't like it. Can we end the show? We're, PAX South is closing. Good. It's the worst convention I've ever been to. <laughs> really? Yes. Uh. Well, yes. Yes. Yeah. So so he, So I have, I, I mean... I didn't know you hated Pack South. It's it's it was all right. It's just it just it, it was. I love Pax. Pax is Pax yeah. East is my favorite convention that I've ever been to. Pax South. Yeah. There's just nothing there. It's just barren. There, there's there's San Antonio is awesome, yeah. but Pax South is in a small area of the convention hall, and mm-hmm. there was just nothing there. It was kind of boring. Anyway, all right. Uh, here's the article. Uh, not every in-person gaming convention will be returning after COVID-19 as the organizers of PAX South today announced they were done with the San Antonio-based show for the foreseeable future. While each of our other events have flourished, some of them drawing hundreds of thousands of attendees from around the world, PAX South hasn't expanded and to some extent has remained the same show that it was when we opened in 2015. That is really sad. I went there in like 2017 or 18 and it was sad. Um... (laughs) The statement also acknowledged that the pandemic had compounded those existing issues with the show. The first PAX South took place in January 2015. The last PAX South was held in 2020. Uh, So I'm sorry if you're from that area. Maybe it was a good show for you because it was close. Uh, But there's plenty of other great shows in the Texas area like Retropalooza just happened, I think. And I heard that that's great. Uh, it, so so Pax is two D. <laughs> this is a higher <laughs> being. We're not we're not going back to that. Yeah. Uh, more people playing Left for Dead two than Back for Blood. <laughs> oh no, that's sad. I mean, a lot of people were being paid to play Back for Blood. True, but not enough people, it seems. No. Uh, Turtle Rock developed the original Left for Dead in two thousand and eight. Uh, given the genre's popularity, it's no surprise that Turtle Rock threw its hat back into the ring with Back for Blood. However, its spirit- the spiritual successor is struggling to surpass the original game even 12 years after it's released. Left 4 Dead 2 is still more popular on Steam than the just released Back for Blood. The Yikes. new game seems to have reignited players' passion for the 2009 predecessor. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, so, so, so that means people played Back for Blood and was like, Screw this. I'd rather play Left 4 Dead and then just play Left 4 Dead. Or they're like, oh, that game reminds me of Left 4 Dead. I think I still have Left 4 Dead on my computer. It's honestly probably exactly the same. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how much you can do with a type of game like this. Yeah. And it looks like they didn't even try to... Will died again. We killed Will again. Uh, there are other games like, that. Oh, it, oh, you're back. I'm now. here. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Hello. I was close. Yeah, I don't know what they could do with the type of game like this either. I was just about to say, uh, there's only so much you can do with uh, uh like a like a like a four player uh player versus environment type game. I feel like we've hit yeah. the cap. You have to do some innovative stuff, and this yeah. genre is just, I guess, too simple to like uh to expand upon in any meaningful way. Yeah. Um, like that's part of why everybody loves left for dead is because it's so, it's such a s- simple game. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of other games that tried to take the mantle of left for dead. Like there's this yeah. game called Earthfall that, uh, everybody forgets about, which was like yeah. supposed to be a spiritual successor to, uh, to left for dead. Uh, and then yeah. of course or now even- we have back for blood. Or even uh, before this, Turtle Rock did Evolve, which was, you know, they purported as the next step because you had the four-player co-op, but also one player plays as the monster you got to try and stop. Mm-hmm. And that that was a massive failure. <laughs> even, like, all these games that try to be like Left 4 Dead, mm-hmm. they just, they, they look like they're cutting it too close. 
Like they're yeah. too much like Left 4 Dead. Like yeah. just play Left 4 Dead then. And we're getting a lot more of those types of games now. Mm-hmm. Like there's Back for Blood, but there I think it was the Microsoft conference. They had like four of those kind of games in the presser during mm-hmm. E3. So anyway. Uh oh, man. Bloodborne's PlayStation 1 D make is real and coming early next year. Wait, wait. It's unofficial. It a- okay, thank you. Yeah, I needed that every article. Every article forgets to put unofficial in the headline. Yeah, it made me think this was legit. That looks awesome. I know. Uh, after months of developer Lilith uh, Walters sharing updates on Twitter and years of on and off again development, the long awaited PS1 D make of Bloodborne is finally coming. Uh, f- what is it the game will be released on PC for free on January 30th, 2022? Uh, Bloodborne PSX only contains Bloodborne's first area and ends after the D make version of the original game's second boss fight, uh, Father Gascoigne. Uh, however, uh, Walther said there are a few bonus areas for players to explore and that uh, they tend to release the source code a few months after launch. So I've never played Bloodborne, but I really want to play this. This looks really good. Yeah. Um, I'm shocked that this, I feel like this is going to be taken down. I don't know how litigious. I don't know. Uh, I mean, Sony probably is, but I don't know how litigious. Yeah. Uh, 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 from software. From yeah. software is, yeah. This looks really good, though. Yeah. Uh, so I'll keep an eye on that, I guess. Uh, we also have Timothy Chalamet. You put this in here. I did because this is like a big deal. So Timothy Chalamet, the, uh, the, the lead actor from Dune apparently used to be, used to mod Xbox 360 controllers and put his videos up on YouTube and they're all still there. Oh my God. What? (laughs) Okay. There's only three of them, but it started out because apparently there was a Vice article who's like, who's like investigating whether or not th- it was him, and he went really into like trying to figure it out. And then Timothy Chalamet did an interview, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I used to mod 360 controllers. I have a couple of videos uh, on YouTube. My handle was, and then he said modded controller 360. So oh my yeah. god. So what did he do? I, it looks like he just did the the d- custom paint cake. jobs. Okay. Yeah. He's got he's got three videos. Uh, three videos. Oh my god, they all this have hundreds cat- of thousands of views. Well, now they do. <laughs> True. Uh, this is horrible looking. He's got blue. He's got blue paint on his fingers. This is from 2010. Yeah. This is a terrible paint job. I'm sorry, Timothy yeah. Chalamet. Uh, well, he was like a teenager making these. <laughs> this one's nice. This red yeah. and green one's pretty nice. Oh, never mind. I saw the back now. Now I hate it. Well, good for him. He's yeah. he, he, celebrities. They're just like us. Yeah, just like us. I'm sure uh, he can afford a Terminator 2 arcade cabinet, though. I'm sure he can afford a, a, a colorware Xbox controller or <laughs> uh, Xbox design lab controller. Now he doesn't even have to True, do that yeah. himself anymore. Uh, <laughs> Full Chicken says Timothy Chalamet's jawline is definitely 3D. <laughs> <laughs> last on this list we have switch hacker group leader gary bowser agrees to pay nintendo 4.5 million dollars holy hell Ooh. yikes you take that i gotta i gotta find a tweet of the week i forgot all right <laughs> a member of team executor a piracy group known for exploiting vulnerable vulnerabilities in video game consoles as well as marketing and selling Nintendo hacks has agreed to waive his right to be tried before a jury and has pleaded guilty to two charges. Gary Bowser, unrelated to Nintendo of America president Doug Bowser, uh, and also unrelated to the big-ass turtle from all the games, who initially was initially re- arrested last year following years of crimes against Nintendo and other console manufacturers, has been charged with Conspiracy to circumvent techno- technological measures and to traffic in circumvention devices, as well as trafficking in circumvention devices, 
Uh, both charges can result in a maximum of five years imprisonment, a fine of up to Holy shit. a fine of up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars or five hundred thousand dollars for the latter charge, and a mandatory special assessment charge. Uh, the case, which has been documented as impacting Nintendo, Sony, Sega, C64, and Atari, states that team executors' work selling illegal hacking devices and pirated software has caused more than $65 million and less than $150 million in losses to its victims. Uh, it also notes that the illegal enterprise included a core group of individuals, including Max Lorum and Yaoing Chen, and used special and used a variety of names such as AxioGame.com and MaxConsole.com. As part of his guilty plea, Bowser must now pay Nintendo an approximate sum of $4.5 million. This figure is Bowser's to pay alone, not in conjunction with other defendants who will be charged separately. Damn. Bowser must also disclose all of his assets and agree to an abandonment of contraband, meaning he must be meaning he must consent to the destruction of a number of items which were seized from his residence in the Dominican Republic, including a lot of hard drives, smartphones, mod chips, a Nintendo Switch, and an SNES Mini. Yo, you're going to take the man's Nintendo Switch? Hey, man, I, don't, I think at this point he doesn't deserve a Nintendo Switch. God damn. Uh, so the big takeaway here is that this wasn't just some guy who was like uh, distributing like ROMs or something. Uh, yeah. he was selling, uh, some sort of, uh, software. He was like yeah. profiting off of it. Now, he wasn't, he wasn't just a guy with like a ROMs website, mm -hmm. which is like, that is a little more questionable. It's like, that's like Nintendo going after the little guy and trying to squeeze money out of him. Uh, yeah. and th th those other websites that Nintendo has gone after before they've, they, they've had ads on their site that got money, so that's how Nintendo yeah. was after, able to go after them for a lot of money. In this case, this guy was l literally selling uh, pirated software and stuff. So uh, th th this is this is a little more uh, 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 criminal, I, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, uh, what exactly was he selling? Uh, said like hacking devices and software. Mm-hmm. And uh, pirated games. Oh God! If you go to if yeah. you click on the torrent freak uh, link at the bottom, it's literally the, the PDF to the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, team executor. That's the that's the group, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to see what exactly the software was. Looks like some hacking uh, software or something. Yeah. Probably Which I mean, general stuff to pirate games with or, you know, put homebrew stuff on it. I mean, homebrew is, isn't that isn't egregious. But if you're no. selling it, that's a little weird. Yeah. Uh, knowingly and willfully uh, 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 participated in a cyber criminal enterprise that hacked leading game consoles and that developed, manufactured, marketed, and sold a variety of of circumvention devices that allow the enterprise customers to play pirated versions of copyrighted video games commonly referred to as ROMs. Yeah. Okay, so selling uh uh selling homebrews, I don't think that's that egregious, but uh uh apparently they thought it well, was. Well, no, but they always say it's for homebrews, but we all know what you're really doing with it. <laughs> the conspiracy which also included co-defendants blah 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 blah. Uh, team executor regularly stressed its intention to support homebrew enthusiasts. However, the U.S. prosecution sees this sees this as a cover. The primary goal was to sell circumvention devices that would allow consumers to play pirated ROMs. To achieve this, co-defendant co well, I mean, yeah, that's what homebrew is. Um, tens of millions in revenue. Oh, they made tens of millions in revenue. Okay, dude, then you could par with with four million of it. <laughs> It allowed users to use Nintendo Switch with custom firmware, which allowed them to play pirated games. Uh, okay. I mean, I think it's less... I, I think if you're selling ROMs or ROM packages or something like that, I mean, selling yeah. homebrew is one thing, but uh, I mean, that is, 
I mean, it's this is where we get into right to repair because I feel like uh, you should be able to put whatever software you want on the device that you own. Yeah, where you get the yeah. ROMs is the that's thing that story. that's the thing that should be uh, that should be uh, uh, sma- like 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 smacked down on. Yeah. So, I, I, I that 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 is that is, I I don't know how I feel about that story. I feel like uh, that, that crackdown might have been a little much, unless he unless he straight up had was just distributing ROMs. Then then I I feel less bad for him. But well, yeah. Anyway, uh, we got Chase with the subscription. Thank you. We got Rusty Bagel for the subscription. Thank you. We got Spankwise for the gifted sub. Thank you very much. We got In the Wild with 100 bits. Thank you. And we got Rerez. Yo, what up, dude? Thanks for the Prime subscription. We know him. Uh, Thank you very much. Well, it's... uh, That's that's all the stories. So it's that time. So, yeah. Go for it. I forgot to put this in the key, but I actually thought of this as the tweet of the week when I saw it. Uh, I think on uh, 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 oh wait yesterday I saw this yesterday oh my god oh wow uh, it's a picture of Adam from Metroid Dread when you're talking to him and it says you are no match for Ravenbeak at your current level of power a friend of mine saw Ravenbeak take off his shirt in the shower and he said that Ravenbeak had, a, had an 8 pack that Ravenbeak was shredded <laughs> I love how Adam in Metroid Fusion was like a controversial thing because he was basically telling Samus where to go rather than you finding your path in the game like you usually do. And then in uh, Other M, like people just hate, straight up hated like human Adam, the character the computer was based on. But now everybody loves this version of Adam. And and he's an he's asshole. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and he's just he's just demeaning you the whole time, telling you that you're not gonna make it. Well, I think it's 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 like the way it's presented, like the whole like accept your inevitability, like it's just so yeah. bl- blunt. It's no, I like that. Funny. Yeah. It's 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 a really it, it gives it an interesting feeling when you're playing the game, and the game's like you can't do this. <laughs> yeah, and it's not something you expect from a Nintendo game. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's why I liked Fusion. Maybe I liked that Adam told me where to go. Well, yeah. I mean, it certainly helped because that was one of our first Metroid games. So true. Uh, okay, we're gonna talk to you people real quick. Yeah. First, we're gonna talk to everybody who left a comment. Not everybody, but select comments from last Five week's people. Wolfden podcast. We're taken from the YouTube channel, youtubecom slash podcast. Arctic Marcus says this podcast is the highlight of my week thank you well thank you well, Arctic yeah. Marcus. sorry for, your week for... is not more eventful <laughs> yes thank you for uh uh for being here with us mm-hmm. sarah pod i'm waiting for paper mario to hit the service before i dive in talking about nintendo switch online also interested in seeing how quickly games are going to be added every month my backlog is huge as it is so i can wait uh, uh, there's no way this is going to be added every month because right. they were doing that with NES and SNES and then they just stopped. So I don't expect any games to be added by the end of the year. They so. got, they should just do one a month because they got they really 38 should, yeah. in the hole, supposedly. Yeah. Um, Melon says I feel like I feel things like people being upset at PlayStation games going to PC. A lot of people aren't really upset. It's just some loud people are upset. I agree. Well, yeah. that's the thing. I when I saw that, I was like cuz I saw the reaction to people being upset. I was like nobody's yeah. actually upset. And then I clicked on the quote tweet and I was like, "Wow, people are actually upset." Uh but yeah, it's probably just a small yeah, a loud the, the- minority. Yeah, the that the the problem is though the loud minority can sometimes be so loud they drown out the conversation of that everyone else is having. Right. Uh James T. Kirk the second says this podcast is the only thing keeping me sane while I'm in school. How is that possible? Yeah. Did you hear the conversation about two <laughs> D versus three D? Uh uh Lou the Lunatic. 
Lula the Lunatic says, I feel really let down by Super Mario Party, so I won't be grabbing the new one. I am enjoying the new Nintendo Switch Online games, not having any issues except the weird controls. I finally figured out Sin and Punishment controls after a while. Uh, so I got the Nintendo Switch controller, the Nintendo Switch Online controller, and yeah. I broke it. <laughs> I tried to do something dumb to it. Uh, I don't think I could fix it. Uh, oh boy. And that's my story. Actually, I could What'd definitely try- fix it. I just don't want to. What'd you try to do? You'll find out on Thursday. Oh, boy. I got to make a video about it, Will. And <laughs> that's going to be really hard. <laughs> but uh, you'll see my struggles. Um, Wait, did I leave one out? No, I, I left one out. Oh, okay. Or did I not answer that that one? Oh yeah, okay. So I did. I did play the news uh, Mario Party. Yeah, Game, uh, Mario Party just sucks. So like, no matter what you do to Mario Party, it's always yeah. gonna suck. So that and also it has some cool. Like it, I mean, it has all online right off the bat, which is incredible because the Super yeah. Mario Party did not. But uh, I got kicked out. My game froze. I had to close the game, and then it wouldn't let me back in. Oh. It does give you a cool, there's a cool feature where it's like, hey, looks like the game crashed. Do you want to rejoin the game you were just playing? And I was like, absolutely uh-huh. I do. And then it wouldn't fucking let me. So, Jeez. Uh, not, not, not about Mario Party. Uh, anyway, now we're in the chat real quick. No, Bob, you suck at Mario Party. Fuck you, T-Dog Gaming. <laughs> in order to be good at Mario Party, you have to suck at Mario Party. True. Uh, Callan9911, what happened to the burn-in OLED switch experiment? Uh, it is right here. I'm afraid to look at it because then I have to make a video on it. Uh, mm. Let's take a look. Zero burn-in. Wow. I haven't been running Ocarina of Time anymore. I'm just, uh, I just have the screenshot up because it's just easier that way. Yeah. But yeah, zero zero burning whatsoever. Wow. Uh, how are you here when you're opening Pokemon cards on another channel, Bob? Uh, that is uh, another person. I don't know if you know this. I don't know if you know this, but believe it or not, there could be two long-haired white guys with beards who talk about Nintendo stuff. There can? Whoa. One of us has a better accent. You decide. Uh, is original Doom a 2D or 3D game based on Bob's description? That is a 2.5D game. <laughs> Cop out. Cop out. <laughs> that I will allow to be a 2.5D game. No, no, uh-uh, no, no. You don't you don't get that. You don't get to do that. You got you got to say is Doom a 2D game because all the characters are two-dimensional sprites or is it a 3D game because you move across a three-dimensional axis? I will say that it is rendered in 3D because the plane is rendered in 3D. But, but not the, sp- the but assets the sp- in the game itself. Correct. I don't like your answer. <laughs> uh, Christopher says, isn't it technically top down? Is it? Well, you no. Know. I could see that because, I mean, your character is the camera. Uh... Right? <laughs> your speakers didn't yeah, cut but- out on you. We just got stun locked. <laughs> Yeah, no, because you're looking straight ahead. You're not looking down overhead on on everything. You know, right, right. So I know that that question is invalid. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Edward Bova. So Bob, what do you think about X Nintendo programmer shows early Zelda sixty four portal demo for the first time? You always come here. And you say something I've never heard of before in my life. Can you like I, link an article when you do that? 
I heard of this. Apparently, like an ex Nintendo developer showed that they were going to put portals in Ocarina of Time. Bef- and this was like years before Portal actually came out. Portals that you can create or portals that were just in the game? Yeah, portals that you can create that you can go back and forth between. Yo, if they just had portals that made it easier to navigate the world, that would be incredible. <laughs> that would, I mean, I'm surprised they didn't implement some kind of thing like with the Ocarina to do that. Like, well, they kind of did. I mean, there's, yeah, I guess, there's, a, yeah. there's like f- f- six songs or so that teleport you to certain areas. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, yeah, Netflix gaming. We never, we didn't talk about that. Is it really a big deal, though? Because, like, they have one I, I mean, game. I still don't even really know. It. Yeah, it's a Stranger Things game that they released on the iPhone years ago. So they have Soltar. Ooh. Is Metroid Dread worth it, though? I saw the last Donkey video, and I don't know anymore. Jin 7A. I was... I... I... He was trolling, but then midway through, it felt like he wasn't trolling anymore. (laughs) And then at the end, he was trolling again. So, I don't really know what he was on about, but it is a phenomenal game. (laughs) I will say this. I cannot remember the last time I was this physically addicted to a Mm. game. Like, I'm getting itchy and, like, you know, scattershot because I haven't played it all day. (laughs) Like, I'm going through withdrawal right now. That's what I mean by, like, physically addicted. Like, all I want to do is play that game and finish that game. Yeah, I... I haven't experienced that in a long time. Yeah, I haven't played it in a while, and I I need to jump on it. I th- I think I'm nearing the end. Um, I think I am too. Yeah, I do really want to play it though. Uh, it, it is I great. Sh- it, yeah. it, but again, we like we like those types of games. Well, yeah, we like side scrollers. Uh, yes. I, uh, Metroidvania type games. I mean, I just I, I'm just into a lot of Metroid games. So yeah. Uh. PB Hopper says Donkey is playing 2.5 D chess with us all. <laughs> uh, so Bob, new Super Mario Brothers, a 3D Mario game, according to you? Yes. <laughs> no, no. We have to make the distinction. Well, no. You, I guess we should start calling them side-scrolling Mario games. I'm gonna start yeah. calling them side-scrolling Mario games now. <laughs> It's whatever I I know what it's not, and it's not a two point five D Mario game. Here is a link to the Zelda the Zelda Ocarina of Time prototype. <laughs> okay, well I know that's not what it looks like. Uh, oh, here's a here's a video. Oh, oh, it's a GIF. Yo. This is first person. They ooh, they were thinking about making Zelda first person. Oh, yeah. So it makes this like little like diamond thing, and you just freaking yeah. get sucked into it and, and teleports. Interesting. Weird. Oh my god! Here's a here's a, like a concept art of Link fighting a a, a metallic looking man that yeah. looks. Similar to the Game Builder Garage guy. <laughs> yeah, that was from the first prototypes of Ocarina of Time where they tried to make Link look like he did in uh, Link to the Past. Uh, when did we stop calling games side-scrollers? I don't know. I haven't heard it in a long time. I usually just hear people say either 2D or platformer. I hear it side-scrolling every once in a while. I mostly hear it with regards to beat-em-ups. Mm-hmm. Like they'll call it a side-scrolling beat 'em up game, but like that's all beat 'em up games, really, because they don't really make 3D beat 'em up games. I do hear 2D a lot to refer to side scrollers. Uh, yeah, but I don't like it. Uh, is 2.5D specific to when you can go between different depths of 2D? It, it's it's when the game. Has elements of both, I guess. Yeah, but in in my own head canon of how this all works, 
Doom is 2.5D because the sp- there's sprites that are flat, but you move in a three-dimensional space. But I don't like it the other uh, way around. I don't like using 2.5D when the sprites are 3D and you move around in a two-dimensional space because it's not rendered yeah. in 2D. It's rendered in 3D. Because 2.5D makes it sound like it's a step in between full 3D and right. uh, 2D. And a game like Doom or Duke Nukem 3D, like those are 2.5D because it's a step towards that direction. Yeah. A game like Dread is, you know, it's full 3D, but it's using a two-dimensional uh, gameplay type. Right. Right. So. Uh, now everybody's just asking what games are, are 2.5D. <laughs> well, is Super uh, Paper Mario 2.5D? Yeah. I don't know because... Paper Mario, he's flat, but I don't think he's actually flat. No, he's actually flat. Well, no, no, he he doesn't he fold and stuff. Yeah, like that's he's flat, but that's not the same as a sprite. A sprite is literally just a pick, no. just a just a just a flat PNG. But well, but again, but uh, but Mario folding and stuff that's that's different. You have to render the folds and shit. Like, like, like that's True. that's entering the z-axis when when he folds. I guess. But he's also, according to the Last Colossi, he's flat in a three D world. What? Which is true. What? He's flat in a three dimensional world. Who? When you when you, in Super Paper Ma- in Super Paper Mario, when mm-hmm. you play as Mario and you switch to the three D aspect ratio, he's still flat. Right. But the world around him is now th- has three dimensions. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? But doesn't he have like a, like abilities and stuff that make him like fold and shit? Or like if he or if he gets if he gets like hit with something, he like he like flattens the other way. You know, I think so. Like he's being rendered in three D is what I'm trying to say. Right in the he, Paper Mario games, but he primarily exists in a two dimensional way. Like, like logically, but but not in the, not in the game design. Uh, this is this is the most philosophical. Well, okay, okay, okay. Here's a here's a great example. I pulled up a video of Super Paper Mario. Okay. Look at how Bowser flips he, when he turns around. The whole th- well, no, that's I mean Doom does that. Bad argument. Well, his arms are built on top of his body, so when he flips around, they're yeah. like an, a separate asset. But don't they do things like when he does it a bit like uh, doesn't he fall like a piece of paper and shit like yeah I feel like this is different than like than like doom We're just we're for podcast listeners we're just watching watching paper. Super Paper Mario <laughs> Yeah play. Stranger Manor says, I'm actually not sure if they are sprites or not. That's what I'm saying. I don't think they're sprites. I think it's actually just no, it's, 3D, but f- but the asset no, is definitely, flat. It's definitely not sprites. But I think I think because it's still flat, so it's still mm. technically 2D. But I'm saying... I don't know what I'm saying, Will. Oh, okay, wait, wait. When he gets down, it like folds weird. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's 3D. Is it a but is it folding or is it warping? Because that's different. I don't know. All right, you know what? Paper Mario, Super Paper Mario, two point five D game. There you go. <laughs> there you go. We started this. I st- I I went through quite an arc in this podcast. I started off just just with just getting ill over the word two point five D. No, I got ill over somebody saying 2D and 3D at this in the same to meant to talk about the same game. And yeah. then I started getting mad over the concept of 2.5D and now here I am coming to terms with the concept of 2.5D. 
Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Oh, circle of life. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on Twitch.tv. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. Shut up. Here's here's Luigi from Super Paper Mario hitting his head on a block and then he folds up and and lightly lightly falls to the ground. Can't be a sprite. It's being rendered in 3D. Okay. It's being rendered in 3D. But he has no depth either way. 3D game. <laughs> 3D game. He's got depth if he's if he's floating like that. If he's folding up, if he's turning into he's got a little arc. He's being rendered in 3D. 3D game. As always, the Wolfden podcast is available every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern on <laughs> twitch.tv slash wolf. And if you can't make the show for any reason at all, like maybe you don't want to listen to this inane conversation anymore we always put it up as an archive version over on our youtube channel youtube.com slash wolf them podcast you can check it out on the man whenever you want if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us analyze super paper mario clips ad nauseum to figure out whether or not it's a 2d or 3d game we put this up <laughs> as an audio version on anchor.fm slash wolf them podcast and your preferred podcast service choice apple podcast spotify google play what have you no matter where you get this show from, though, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. What a wild ride today was. This was I like I think I'm gonna go to bed after this. Like this was this was about to be a boring show. Yeah. And then look what happened. Oh my god, someone's playing Paper Mario right now. <laughs> <laughs> um who do we got here? Uh, oh, you know what? This will be fun. My friend uh, Sean just started streaming. Okay. And he's got nine viewers. So let's all go say hello to uh, Sean. Just say hi, everybody. It'll be a fun yeah. little thing. He's playing Final Fantasy. What a loser. What a nerd. A uh, nerd. Everybody say hello. It'll be, it'll be a fun little goof. And I'll see you all on Thursday. I don't know what I'm going to play. Maybe Metroid. Who knows? Goodbye, everybody. Bye.